I am a Mac addict approaching my 80th birthday. I've used various Mac devices over the last 20 years or so to store and access information in order to edit videos and photographic uh, images, etc. My devices have included Emacs, MacBook Pros and iMacs right up to the latest top-end iMac from 2017. I've used various applications such as iMovie and ScreenFlow and have successfully uploaded many videos to YouTube. Recently, I found a lack of inspiration had developed in my computer interests and I needed another stimulus to excite me. So I looked at the specification for the latest F11 inch iPad Pro and decided to give this device a whirl and see what transpired. I settled on the 11 inch model with 500 gigabytes of memory together with the Apple Pencil 2 and the Smart Keyboard Folio. All in all, quite an expensive package, which cost rival that of the lower end MacBook Pros. Still, I was looking for a grand toy to stretch me that bit further in my dotage, which would still encourage me in my video and photo editing interests, possibly using apps like LumaFusion and Lightroom, and of course, using a touch screen function. Was I disappointed in my quest? Well, we shall see and on, maybe. People of my generation, born just before World War II, do not take the magic of new technology for granted. My first experience of solid state devices was when I was seven years old, and my father, who was a telephone engineer, appeared one day with some strange bits and pieces which he used in his job. These bits and pieces include a germanium diode, a variable condenser, a coil of copper wire, and a pair of GPO high resistance headphones. Put together with an added aerial and earth, and here was a crystal set capable of receiving radio signals out of the ether. What a revelation to a young lad like me. I was just, it was just sheer magic to hear in the headphones, the BBC light program, home service and Radio Luxembourg, etc. I was taken aback and smitten with a sense of wonder by this magic. Youngsters nowadays who take computers, smartphones, etc. for granted, surely miss out on the way I felt about that humble crystal set. I shall never forget it. I set up the iPad Pro 2018 as recommended, and it was a breeze using my iPhone 5S to set up the initial format. Face recognition worked fine. The screen was superb, but I had problems since I was not used to controlling the iPod with gestures. I'd always used a mouse with previous Mac devices, and with no home button on the iPad, I found operation difficult at first. It was like learning to, to walk or riding a bicycle as a child. Talk about teaching an old dog new tricks. I was definitely a slow learner in touch screen control. Anyway, perseverance has its own reward in this respect. I can swipe away as long as the day lasts now. It's just a new way of doing things. Good fun after a lot of exasperation. The first blow to my esteem came when I connected a hard drive to the USB-C port of the iPad Pro. No go at all. I could not at that stage access the videos I had got on my numerous external hard drives. I eventually found a way around this hurdle, which was to transfer files using the option of wireless transfer. I used an old one terabyte Seagate wireless plus drive, which I had had since 2014, and it contained nearly one terabyte of my MP4 videos. This worked flawlessly. So home and dry. Great. However, Seagate have discontinued this wireless drive, so I looked at another alternative on which to put the remainder of my home video collection. I settled on the RAV Power all-in-one file hub, which I coupled up to a 4 terabyte Western Digital Elements external drive, and this combination yielded fantastic access to the file system for my iPad Pro, running on iOS 12. Success, success. I was delighted but the fiddling of faffing to get my files to be shown on the iPad Pro was nowhere near as easy as for an external drive attached to an iMac running OS X. Five out of ten for Apple. Perhaps they will remedy this failure to access external storage in the next iOS 13 update, as well as provide mouse support. Wishful thinking, I suppose. Whilst on this topic, I did try alternative methods of file transfer between my Mac iMac computer and with the iPad Pro. 
One tactic was to direct link the iPad Pro with the iMac using the USB-C to USB 3.1 cable. This enabled the transfers of home videos to be made using iTunes. Quite a successful operation. Another technique was to use a USB flash drive connected to the USB-C port of the iPad Pro. The flash drive had an appropriately renamed video file which I set into its root directory. The video file could be imported into the iPad because the iPad was fooled into thinking that the renamed video file came from a camera setup. What we have to do to finally get around Apple restrictions in this iOS software. Finally, I come to review the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio and the Apple Pencil 2. In my opinion, the keyboard is a great addition to the new iPad Pro 2018. It's a bit pricey, but the keyboard works fine with the device and the folio material also provides good protection. The Apple Pencil is phenomenal with its magnetic coupling and automatic charging. I love to scribble using Apple apps such as Notes. Scribbling reminds me of the time at school when I used to doodle on my exercise books, much to the teacher's annoyance. However, with this new iPad Pro, I can immediately erase the doodles and start again. Naughty boy. <laughs> Go into detention. Anyway, what fun it, it is. And to me, this is what the new iPad is all about. Fun, fun, and yes, more fun. Someone my age in the twilight years wants to get some fun out of life. And to some extent, with my computer literacy, this new iPad fulfills its function. However, now onto a more serious note. Please, please, Apple. <sighs> Give me an iOS update which enables me to connect external storage to the device and hence directly import files. Also, Apple, please give me an appropriate file structure in iOS to store the imported material. I would dearly like to use this new iPad Pro as an alternative to my iMac and MacBook Pro and utilize this touchscreen facility and the, the iPad's fast processing power to full advantage. Time will tell whether Apple wish to make the iPad Pro a laptop replacement. All for now, and thank you for viewing these ramblings of an older Rob the Doc. <laughs> thank you.